I also don't know if I'm in a good place on the UI as well. Um, oh, volume. Oh my god, the music suddenly came in. It came right the hell in. There we go. All right, I'll move myself around on ca I don't know if I'm better off over in the other corner or in this corner, because there's text on this side of it. We'll see how it goes. New game. Right, I've been told you can continue. I never even started with that. Um, you can pick an archetype or you can create your own. I've been told to have a look at the character creation, but looking at this one, I I'm not a min-maxer as well. I'm, I'm, I'm going to approach this very casually, but... Uh, yeah, let's see. Intelligence, Psyche, Physique, um, Motorix. Okay. How well your body moves. Motorix? Wow. It is daunting. I've been told this could be a long thing. I'm going to have a look at it, but I might just go with an archetype. So we've got a thinker who is a very intelligent, bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with an original ideas. Uh, or very psychological, magnetic personality, but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Oh, hell yes, I like the sound of that. Extremely physical, interacts with the world through the body. Gets things done, dumb as a rock. <laughs> I quite like the idea of the sensitive, actually. So intelligence is just capacity for reason. This is the power to influence yourself on others. Interesting. Uh, physique is your body build and how well you move. So that's like coordination. What is this stuff in London Encyclopedia? Let's have a look at this for now. I hope I can nope. Yes, I can nope back out. Good. Uh, well, I'm not going to do any of this. I'm going to I'm going to go back and we're going to I think I'm going to pick the psyche type person. But I just want to have a look at some of this and see what it is. It's usually a good idea because then you get an idea of what's actually available. Um, so, logic. Wield raw intellectual power. Oh, the encyclopedia is called upon a knowledge of uh, produ uh, to produce fascinating trivia. Actually, maybe I will do a, a build like this. I don't know. I might try and do, like, a lot of intellect and psyche. Be just crazy clever. Insane genius. And... Not very strong. Maybe the two of each and then everything else into these. I'm kind of liking this idea. Yes, five heads, yes. Play the actor, lie and detect lies. Oh man, I would, yeah. I'm, see, I love social stuff in roleplay games. I like social manipulation, you know. Alright, you know what, actually then? I'm going to go back. Let's start with these. Put one into physique. Actually, yeah, what, I'll just have one on physique. Four, five, and two, maybe, for how agile we are. I don't want to be super weak, you know. But if we can, like, think our way out of problems. I think I'm going to... I am going to do this. I'm not going to play one of the archetypes, then. I'm going to do... I'm going to do my own thing. So I'm guessing, like, what do these do then? Do these cost things? Or these are signatures? Click to mark a selected skill as a signature. So if I did that, can I not? Yeah, I can only have one of these then. Right. So are these all available to me through the game, though? Because that would be pretty cool. They're all available. So these are, like, the basic skills. These are the, like... The things that you can use that are part of the different um, stat trees. Right. Cool. So, wield raw intellectual power to deduce the world. You can upgrade these as you earn XP. Sweet. I, I was kind of wondering, so there's, there's this, like, dot track here. And looks like setting a signature gives you one point in it already. So, yeah. Um, so, we automatically have, like, a five. Like, yeah. If I set that as signature, that goes to six. Okay, cool. Call upon the knowledge, knowledge produce fascinating trivia. I kind of like that, but practice the art of persuasion, rigorous intellectual discourse, 
Play the actor, lie and detect lies, understand creativity, see art in the world, reconstruct crime scenes and make the laws of physics work for the law. That I like. <laughs> Let's do that. Oh yeah. And I can only have one of these as a signature. Right, okay. Well, for now, that's that's the signature for now. We'll see if there's anything better. So, the side key. Hold yourself together to keep the morale up. Hunches and gut feelings, dreams in waking life. Ooh. Ooh. Understand others. Work your mirror neurons. Intimidate the public. Assert yourself. I could never do that. Connect to Station 41 and understand cop culture? The what now? Station 41? What? 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 What is that? Papanaka! Hello! How are you? Good to see you. You can see more info if you click the button in the top right. Oh! Oh! Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, King. Cool. Cool for cops, cop aficionados, and pretend cops. Anything cop-related and cop-adjacent. Yeah. It's the spirit of police in the cop geist. Oh, okay. <laughs> so understand your blue-souled sisters and brothers, not only by picking on the subtle signals of your partners. You get your pulse on the, f on, uh, the finger on the pulse, basically, of, of being a cop, I guess. Oh. Okay, at high levels, you'll be the very heart of the police force. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, charm men and women play the puppet master. Yeah. I like that. Dance, my puppets. Dance. Diplomats, charmers, sociopaths. <laughs> yeah. All of them, you know, quite mutually adjacent to each other, actually. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be a lot of character creation early here, guys. I've, I've been warned about this, that it's going to be a while. Settle in, get yourself a coffee and a donut, and uh, enjoy. So, skill enables you to implant ideas in the minds of others. Ooh, I like that. Make gangsters turn on each other. Oh, right, okay, yeah, 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 I get what the skill is. Right, all right, yeah. It's the very blobby, weird, man booby looking thing. Um, so these are the, for the fighters. Well, I've been, I'm barely gonna get into this, so... I'm assuming I can't increase the stats, though? Like, is this gonna stay one forever? Which would be fine if it does. But taking blows. Shrugging off pain. Unstoppable fighters and masochists. It's just the start level. Ah, okay, cool. Pain threshold ignores damage you can push on, blooded and crawling, yeah. So, okay. The physical instrument. Flex powerful muscles and enjoy healthy organs. <laughs> I like the way they put that. Enjoy healthy organs. Oh well then. Electrochemistry. Go to uh, the party planet. Love and be loved by drugs. Right. So that's... Yeah, I, I'm guessing that's just like using chemical buffs and stuff. Shivers, raise the hairs on the back of your neck and tune into the city. It comes when the temperature drops and you're more keenly aware of a surrounding. There's a temperature system? Oh, interesting. It enables you to, to hear the city uh, itself and truly belong to the streets. A supernatural ability. Well, that actually seems really cool. Why isn't that in Psyche, then? That seems like a Psyche-type skill, in a way. Because I would have thought you could swap these two, really, in a way, in my opinion. Authority is like something you physically intimidate. Because it says intimidate the public and assert yourself. You'd think your physique would play into that more than this. That's like a weird psychological thing. Interesting. Let the buddy take control and threaten people. I mean, okay, there's a threatening thing here as well. Right, yo. Hand-eye coordination. Ready, aim, fire. All right, so that's pretty basic. Understand what that means. 
Perception, I mean, yeah, I get what that is. Played, played enough roleplay games here and smell everything. No details go unnoticed. Reaction speed is the untouchable man. Does this, so I'm guessing this maybe plays into an initiative system, perhaps? Or gives me special abilities at times, like I move first. Seek, uh, or sneak under the noses and stun with immense panache. If you're gonna stun somebody, do it with panache. Urges you to be the disco. Disco isn't dead, guys. This is it. Hmm. Okay, cool. I like the look of that. That's interesting. So you'd be a slippery bugger with that one. Master machines, picks, locks, and pockets. And straighten your back, keep your poker face. I very much like the idea of using this visual calculus, though. Um, let's read the info again. So, it, uh, not only the laws of state, but the laws of nature enables you to create a virtual crime scene models in your mind's eye. You see how a bullet shattered glass uh, from that trace its trajectory with mathematical precision. You are also... Uh, to count many footprints and at a glance discern the shoe size design as well as the height, weight, and gender of the person who wore them. At high levels, visual calculus makes the world reveal its secrets to you, but you may be so absorbed by your mind uh, diorama you don't notice the as crooks steal your pants. <laughs> However, at low levels, your mind's eye will be uh, blind. Reconstructing crime scenes will be difficult without outside help. Interesting. Hmm. I, th I think I still kind of like the idea of this as our um, signature. Let's go with that. Here is her at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. Begin. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Mm. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Okay, cool. It's great. Good news. Short stream, guys. I'm out of here. But what if I wanted to do more? That's the main thing. <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> Simply keep on non-existent. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever, baby. All right, baby. <laughs> yeah. I guess you choose two then. <laughs> that's, that's just fine. Okay, I'll do this. <laughs> hey, Amber, how's it going? And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Hmm. Okay, good. Because I didn't know I had an ex-wife. I have a wife. She's not an ex-one. Hopefully never will be. Yeah. This is great. Yes, it is. But what was that about the ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source, its bloated and shameful, a ball of meat surrounding you. Is this a recipe? This is a terrible line of questioning, All right, and it sorry. will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Again, is this a recipe? I want to know about the ex something. Ex love. Ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. The, the what now? You leave my abyss of allergic zone alone. Hmm. 
pain, burning light, and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? Don't be naive. Of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever ends. No, let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Again with the recipes. Pouring so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, chef? It's a delicious sauce. I will pour as much of it as I like. In fear and apprehension. You should ask yourself there first. So the Inland Empire. What? So this is an easy success. Eight versus ten. All right. I did this to myself. Tell me what's waiting for me. Don't care. I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. No, I didn't. Wait, I did this to myself. Yes, your one disco mother. Okay. What's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically <laughs> monkey. all just evil Turn to monkey. juking it out on a giant ball. Okay, is that a big disco ball? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> The mysterious line of choices? Yeah. How big is the ball or how small are the apes? It's all relative. You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. So that's a planet, I guess, yeah. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. And this duking it out, I keep hearing about. What's that? Time for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. <laughs> Sounds like something I would love to do. Let's go. Sign me up. Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. You know what makes them evil all of a sudden? All right. Philosophical questions. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting. Longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. Okay, thank you, Volition. Are you the game studio, Volition? No, no, okay. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. No! Please no, I changed my mind. Take me back to the formless, disembodied nothing. Oh no, I'm not. I am not scared. I am a champion. I like this one. Mother, help me. There's a head attached. I'm in it. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. Mm. Help someone cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. <laughs> Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? Ooh. An fiery streak penetrates your skull. Trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somebody shredding on an electric guitar. Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice can name a motor carriage. Okay. Tweak the volume a little bit. Oh my god, I am all but naked. Thank god I have my wife fronts on. Okay. So what? Oh, 
take yes take those take your pants Ooh. Ooh. can I look at stuff the window stands broken in its frame cold wind blows in the broken window is talking to us visual calculus assess the damage yes the shards face outward whatever broke this window came from the inside okay so i smashed it i threw something outside did i break it with my own hands a fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand yes i punched but it none of it is recent oh i didn't punch it more likely a projectile than a held object there are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact Wait, what am I doing? Who's talking to me? My detective sense is talking to me. Assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Like the green shoe that's on the hat rack in the corner, which, coincidentally, is missing its friend. Threw my shoe out the window. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can still find the other on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. I don't need it anymore. You mean no, someone me. else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? Maybe. This person also forced the drinks on you. Yes, they did. They're very naughty people. But I should go and get that shoe. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. I gained XP from determining a shoe thrown through a window. Noise. So I have an inventory system. Oh my goodness. Oh, these trousers are giving me like specific stat points. Oh. <laughs> So, Monday's job. Find the other shoe. Seems like uh, the green snake's shoe is missing its partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a map. I have no information on the map. And, yeah, here we go. Alright, so it hasn't actually done that. Uh, level up requirements. Don't have enough points. Okay, good, good, I guessed. Have a look around the rest of the place. There's that. Oh. Take that. Dude put his jacket on. Magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red. It's empty. Can I pick it up or no? Okay. Fair enough. the hell is this? It's a mess. Someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. Real to real player is still rolling, it's empty. Okay. Take the shoe. Doesn't give us anything, but I've got a shoe now. Yeah. <clears throat> do I not have a shirt? Probably do, I haven't found it. Bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. I left the water running. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Uh -huh. Hot water sprays from the bridge. Fragile masculinity. Covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Yes. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. 
Okay. Don't care. Still wipe it. <laughs> oh no! Ah! It's hideous! You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Looks like it's got a bit of a welt. Either that or it's bad bags under the eyes. And very ruddy nosed. Oh my goodness. I look. Oh my god. The portrait image of me just. I look absolutely fucking sloshed. Dear Lord, help me. What is this? Of course I do. It's some kind of superstar. I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late stage alcoholic. Now, dear Lord, Whatever help me. It is, at least it's dead now. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Oh, no. I'm not making it. The face is making it itself. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, you keep making the face. Can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. Oh, no, the wind changed and the expression stuck. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? I don't know, it's indescribable. <laughs> Stardom. Like it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. Uh, I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has-been kind of way. There's some charm to it, or it's the expression of pain. I don't know. No, let's go with three. I think it's supposed to be suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the Please ladies. Please promise yourself you are not going to try it on any of the ladies. Whatever happens. I promise. I promise. Lie. <laughs> no one tells me what to do. I do what I want. No, I promise. Lie. You liar. You can't even tell the truth to yourself. Go ahead. Try something. Oh my goodness. So what is this? Oh my goodness. What have I done? So... Encyclopedia, dig into the mind to locate the source of the expression or attempt to stop the expression from happening. I, I have to pass a role in electrochemistry to change my facial expression. What? I think I'm going to go with this one for now. It's a even. Okay, we will try to dig in and figure out what the expression is. This is life, yes. It belongs hey. to the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Wow, that's deep. That's why I'm smiling. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Hell yeah, disco. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Oh, is that the secret to pronouncing French? Damn, I could have known that before playing Assassin's Creed Unity. Gotta make things rhyme. Are we? Ah. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it, why? Or I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. How long ago was the new? Anything else? Like, oh my, why did I drink myself into oblivion? Or I guess it's, uh, that's it then, conclude. I guess I can ask all of these. Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. All right, need to add the clicking sounds. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. How long ago was the new? 
Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. See you later, Papanaka. Thanks for the look. Or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of Disco. The rest is darkness. Aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Kinema. Okay, a game with this Caprice Kimena motor carriage. Ooh. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. What is this? The heck is this? The thought cabinet. Oh my god, there's a load of stuff here that's all greyed out. Oh my god. So is this just like a database, I guess? Whatever happened to Guillaume Le Million, um, who with his amber mane and sparkling teeth beguiled the tattered remains of the nation while you suffered and suffered, did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slending, uh, or the slender in uh, new lines of some uh, starlit uh, boit de newt? I can't remember how he pronounced that 20 years ago. Spare a thought for his great ass too. Oh, wait. Maybe he became a police officer in Ravishal West. Hmm. So if I... What happens if I internalize it? Oh, I see. Oh, this is like a deduction thing, maybe. Aha! Uh -huh, I get it. All right, that's the thought cabinet. Leave it be. We'll keep the expression going. But I see a shirt. Nice. Now we got ourselves a shirt. Alrighty. Now we can leave. Value privacy, the door has been locked from the inside. Can we unlock it? You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Oh. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The thing around your heads are your thoughts. Oh, right. Oh, we're doing this now. Nice. This. Hello, officer. The year is 51. Hello, lady. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Hmm. Officer, am I military personnel? Turn your bloated face away from her beauty and just keep walking. No. Uh, no. Seems perplexed by the question. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> why, did, why did you call me an officer? Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay. You're shitting me. Goddamn right I'm a policeman. Don't you forget it. No, are you sure? I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. Maybe. All this time? You've been here for three days. On official police business. No less. Okay, what business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. It's important work. You have no doubt about the drinking. 
But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. I don't know uh, where I am or who I am or what the uh, Caprice Kinma is. Um, how uh, how I know what one sounds like. Uh, why I don't remember being a cop or anything else. Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? I could take a very low chance suggestion challenge. Uh, try the expression on her. Let her know what you uh, that you want her physically. Okay. The lols. The words have already left your mouth. <sighs> well, <laughs> okay. I want to have fuck with you. What? <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. Yeah. What did you say? Those were words, Come but on. just not in a good order. Say it again. Uh, no, I don't want to. I'm embarrassed Pretty now. Please, one more time. All right, I said I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> damn right you did. You crazy ass, all you. What kind of cop are you? A cop of the apocalypse. A copocalypse. Or a superstar cop. I can no longer deny it. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said that. You're pretty. I'm sorry. I. S I'm the sorry cop. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. I sure don't remember being one. I'd have lied. No, I'm a superstar cop. Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. It means I'm a bloated old drunk with sideburns and disco pants. What else do you need? If I don't have a joke up my sleeve, it's on me. I am a scion of uh, Guillaume Le Million. Or maybe you are Guillaume Le Million. He'd be about your age now. Think about it. One thing, though. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. What? Okay. And for the record, no. I didn't do it. Uh, what? You left a nice long stub in the ashtray. I'm still s- oh, it's still smoking. Okay. Well, that was interesting. What is this? The week's edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe Le Mans. Okay. Well, that was an interesting encounter. <laughs> I'm already digging this game so far. Loving its style. It's just the right kind of weird for me. So, hang on, was I... S I didn't look in the other direction, hang on. Am I, is the balcony that other way? Yeah, uh, F for the shoe. Yeah, I just remembered, like, oh, I'm downstairs. Yeah, I was supposed to get a shoe from a balcony. That balcony should be here. How do I get out to it? There's something on the table. Oh, money! Man! I'm a police officer, I'm gonna take this to- Ah, there's a door here, look. Yeah, I'm going to take this as, like, evidence to the lost and found. I'm assuming I'm a cop. I don't know, actually. Here we go. Shoo! Hell yes, I found it. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. <laughs> two baby crocodiles, yeah. These do not look like normal cop shoes, or how do they fit? Well, they're yours. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. 
Did it just start snowing while I was out here? It did, didn't it? It was raining a moment ago. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. All right, we got the shoe. It's going to be very important later on for keeping our foot warm. Mm-hmm. All right, so double clicking does run. I was wondering about that. Totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Utterly. And it needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline. Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. Or in my case, talking uh, uh, on mute. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> the buttons on my stream deck sometimes don't quite know when I press them. All right, well, anyway, I was just agreeing with all of this. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I muted to cough. Yeah. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. Oh, we've got to find a tragic song and then sing it on karaoke. Sing karaoke. Let's find. Uh, got to get hold of a sad song on tape. All right, that sounds good to me. Hey, Zaras, what's up? You still haven't finished your run of this? Wow. <laughs> so what did I get on here? Did it just give me something? This feels right. You belong here. Come on, strike that pose. No. late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Okay. It's a heavy game. Yeah, I've been told. I was just saying at the start of the stream, I, I'm going to look for some games as like a palate cleanse, you know, just to just, you know, do other stuff as well as this game. That was disdain. Rather than just make it all on the channel for now. Looks like he's not a fan. Hmm. I sense you're not a fan. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Hmm. So not only am I a cop, but I'm also a hero, or you're being sarcastic? No, I'm gonna go with this. Yes you are, a real decorated hero. What did I do? What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, 
Then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. Um... I'm guessing I didn't do any of these things. You're right, you didn't. And it's only taken you three days not to. Okay. What have I been doing all that time? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. He looks down again and keeps plucking at the bird. Look at the bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Hmm. What happened to the burb? Look, your buddy is over there. Looks at the door where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor, looking at me like, have you done walking around? You know, Why don't you no. go and talk to him, okay? Uh... What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. So you're the cafeteria tender. Gotcha. But, uh, what's the difference? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. So you Sylvie tend, tend three bar bars? Here. Not me. I'm only standing in. Yeah, okay, cool. And where'd the Sylvie go? She just, you know... Okay, went through a time door. Was captured by the TVA. His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. You just what? So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it. Wow. The attitude, though. Are all your, uh, you know, like, licenses in order? Your health certificates and inspections, dude? Uh, what? Okay, I'll take that. Healing item. A water cooler, a large bubble is rising to the surface. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the only word Monday is written on it. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today's starts in a man's handwriting. A soft pair of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. It's bolted. A sign reads "Kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300." Dude here. Bottle of rum knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. Oh, that's a waste of rum. Wake up. Sleeping dot worker. Sleeping at the table wearing a mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. At the back of his red shirt. Of his shirt reads Wild Pines and circled with a logo of a tree. Mm. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Wake him up. Dear, I'm not physically strong enough to wake a sleeping man. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he yeah, does. Yes, my need is greater than yours. Yeah, I mean, a stiff breeze would, ha like, knock us over, so... But can I take those, or what? Where do these items go? But they're not in my inventory. <laughs> Nothing else around here, no? Okay. Oh, what's this? They're above the portrait? You mean like these? Oh. 
Right, so they were a healing item. So there's one healing item for health. That's the one we picked up. So the uh, headache tablets are the morale healing. Ah, gotcha. Okay, that's cool. Royal Pinball Machine is unplugged. Or oh, Royal Pain. Hello, sweetie. Hello. Cryptozoologist's wife. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. I currently have one HP. Yes, you're right, I do. <laughs> well then. Let's hope I have plenty of time when I lose that one HP to use a heal item to gain one HP back. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Well, it'll have to because I'm useless. I have one hit point. Who is he to me? He is your half-brother. Oh, well then. Hi. What's up, bro half? Um, shake his hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You but it's not my half-brother. You lied. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Invent a name for yourself. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. It is not yet time. <laughs> well, that's a mysterious thing. And your name is? It's not time for you to know my name yet. Hmm. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, then. Yeah, he processes, then disregards it. Like, it oh. looks like we had a little scary error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You mean the bartender? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Oops. Uh, you mean him? Not towards the cafeteria manager. Yeah, we talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? Yeah, you understand better than I do. It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Yes, the police. I'm aware I am a policeman. I'm gonna go with right. that. And the interviews? <laughs> uh, I haven't. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Uh... But man, you know, yeah, right? It may have found its way back up there, though. They do that, right? Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? Um... I don't like dead bodies. Sure. But did you take it down from the tree? Uh... No. So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. This is the first I hear of a dead body. Hmm. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to I mean, I didn't want to interrupt the crime scene. It's messing with the evidence. What if I told you I'm not really a police officer? What if I told you you're not really a police officer? We're not even talking right now. 
What if I told you we're in a video game? <clears throat> uh, let's just play along with this. Let's get moving. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Uh, well, hmm. Maybe. Uh, shouldn't I have a badge? Check pockets. You mean you don't have a badge? Um, it wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Sure, we'll get right on that. Report the missing badge, inspect a body, interview the cafeteria manager, sing karaoke is very, very important to me. Alright, let's talk to the uh, cafe dude again, though, first. Now that my colleague is here to back me up with this reticent the arsehole. The unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. <laughs> Just ignores me like, oh, it's that fool. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41? Hmm, still doesn't know my name. I am the Harbinger of Ruin. What is golden orange like a forest fire, but smells like liquor? My name is Whiskey. I'm currently between names. <laughs> oh, I don't know, one or two. I'm gonna go with two. Are you kidding me? Hmm, no man, help me out. What is golden orange and smells like liquor? It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor. And you're orange. Dude, okay, look, there was a special on spray on tans. Don't judge. See? Everyone agrees it's your color scheme. We're on the right track with this name thing. Hell yes. Is this what you get when you call the police now? We've been waiting for a week here. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. For a moment, the cafeteria manager fidgets under the lieutenant's gaze. Then, he gives in. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. So we look behind a pile of co uh, coasters, find a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. Caller using the short wave as well in the car. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. He really likes people to know how important it is. I manage several cafeterias, actually. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. This is not up to us where you work, dude. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. Right then, questions. I got the... Um, play the fool. Who, me? No, I'm good. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, questions. I got this. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before ask him if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous questions which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Hmm. Okay. So where exactly is the body? 
Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. How do we get through there? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Cool. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's right. Oh, did we voice. make the hole? Whoops. Uh, why did Sylvie go away? Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. So answer the question. No, before I asked where, now I'm asking why. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Why are you creeping on your staff? Thank you. That's just not professional, dude. So, mystery solved. Is it? Because I thought you were supposed to be investigating the lynching, not my employer conduct. This stuff gets on my nerves. I'm a feminist. I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. Oh, yes. I don't know. I just went for it. You're right. Probably shouldn't have asked. No, everything has something to do with everything. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. This is a long shot. I don't know who killed, who killed him. him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Hey, you could have made our jobs easier, though. That's all I'm saying. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if he doesn't know? Hmm. So before you said they hoisted him on a tree, who do you mean they? Oh, people are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. And who says that? The locals, the customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Hmm. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Why would the dock workers lynch the man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbour company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionisters probably thought they'd send a message. Hmm. I'm not going to ask if he killed. I don't think this guy, you know, he's struggling to fix a broken bird, let alone kill someone. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Let's go. All right, that's all. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Uh, by what measure? I don't owe you shit. Oh, man. I got to slip away, but oh, no. No! Uh, what? What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. Real. A real, huh? I, I, R, or inter isolary real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. <laughs> yeah, by real, you mean some form of street cred? No, you don't owe me street cred. You owe me money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Mm hmm. What exactly is money, really? Would you would you settle for like an NFT or something? I could trade you one. But you're under arrest for it, attempting to extort a police officer. What are you, a no. philosopher? Yeah. What is money? Since I woke up, I have trouble remembering most even basic concepts of reality. No, actually, I might be. What's it to you? Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Yeah, but who decided that, and why does it have value, really? When you think about it. <laughs> Uh, proceed to show him the coins you found. Is this money? Um, 
Proceed, but don't show him the coins. They're yours. This is my money. I decide it has value. Um. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing this along. Why do I need it? For survival to pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? There's nowhere else to stay in Martinez, and it's a cold spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy, but it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. If you run out of money, you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. Hmm. I'm not an asshole. And interesting, where do I obtain this money you speak of? Are you serious? From your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry, I don't think cops can take bribes. No, no, but I mean, if you were offering one, by all means, and then I'll use that to pay you. Some do take recompense, but only to survive. Recompense, is that what we call it now? I'm not going to show him the coins. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. Ah. Oh no. <laughs> and what do I owe this place for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. No, but seriously, a bird flew into the window and broke it. Another thing my fault. violated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, math? real is still money. Really? You want to throw math at me now? Jesus. So what happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you're better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Hmm... Is there somewhere else I can stay around here? I don't have a home, I don't remember where my home is. Fuck this place, I'll take my chances on the streets and I'll see what I can do. Hmm... I kind of want to do right by this guy. I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car, okay? We have to get this investigation Yeah, can I file now. expenses? Good luck. All right. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. Do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Upon Marvel Hill. Why did you say that? Because it was there. Uh, if synapses firing it doesn't mean anything. The name must have a meaning for me. Uh, Lieutenant Kitsurugi, uh, do you know a place called Marvel Hill? No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? An expression? A saying. Up on Marvel Hill, a great high place. One that is impossible to climb back to. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. I don't know, maybe. Could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, you know, the exact number of a building? Oh, I live in a dumpster, I don't care. Fuck everything. Hobo cop! <laughs> Hobo cop, I'm tempted. Entertain the thought when you get the time. Maybe being a hobo and a cop has its advantages. Yeah, right. I know, right? So what is this then? Hobo cop. It's like Robo cop, but the homeless version. A cop and a hobo, a hobo cop, upsides can be disheveled, doesn't have to wash, carries himself with a lurched gusto, hobo cop doesn't need anyone or anything. No one can kick you out because you don't have a home, never pay rent again, never hear you're drunk, why did you ever come here Harry, go home, you're embarrassing yourself. Downsides are... are there any? I mean seriously, give me one. 
So, I mean, I don't really know how this works yet, so I'm just going to stop for now. Alright. So we're going to pay for the damages. Ask the station for additional funds. Hey, Harakai! I realize I've missed two hours of Yakuza plot yesterday. Oh dear, you'll have to go and uh, watch the VOD then and get caught up. Yeah. That was that was the end of the game. We're done. Yakuza's finished, so feel free to go and watch uh, the VOD. How's it going anyway? Good to see you, dude. Summer doors are closed for the winter. Okay. So I've got to go out through this other door over here. Is there a way to move the map around a little more? Like... Oh, I can move with the keypad. Oh, that's easier then. I had a feeling that might be the case. Yeah, we just ran right to the very end of that game. It ran over an hour and a half, like, beyond the stream end time. And it was practically all main story, all stream. <laughs> so, big ending. Alright, let's have a look around. What's this? Heap of snow melting in a wheelbarrow. Street sign reads, fuck the police. Okay, strong. Sure. Pigs go home, the street name is illegible. Okay, cool. Not fans of the police. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Um, what's with this fuck the police business, or who are you? Me? I am just a gardener. Good to meet you, just a gardener. Another question, then. I am then. pleased to meet you too, officer. We need directions. Of course. Where to? Where am I? What do you mean? Just tell me where we are, okay? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called... Roundabout north, I think. So it's roundabout the north part of town, is what you're saying? Wish I can watch the VOD, but your cat is sleeping on your chair, so you're just uh, waiting for the right time. Oh, yes, the cat's important, yes. What's up the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The east? The harbour gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. South? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What's on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. The west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Okay, thanks. No problem. Mm-hmm. Have to of run. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. Did we not bring our own gloves? They're not my style. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna let her have a glove. She's, she needs her gloves. I'm not gonna take her gloves from her. Can't talk to this person. Okay. Goods from the lorry ha has had was lit. Yeah, they lit the surroundings. I guess. Oh, I can zoom out. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna stay zoomed out. This is a bit easier. Glossy magazine, uh, most able-bodied men. The issue hosts the top ten list. That would not be me. Jump jams, a popular uh, music mag. Welcome to Ivashol. Okay, if uh, you think uh, this guy drank away his badge and gun, but not his gloves. <laughs> True. Why are you addressing my partner like that? Oh, what is a Revachol? Go with that. Don't you welcome to Revachol me? 
My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Wow, get him told. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. Yeah, you, you tell him. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Big thoughts. He's right, you're undermining our best shot at the real self-determination. I'll stop ripping into the guy just really proud of being Revacholian. Limbo, what's going on here? Oh, I don't want to deal with this. No, he's right. Yeah, get him told. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Rivachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. Sure it is. Yeah, you said that to everybody. Mm-hmm. I know exactly It's a big thoughts you game. Mean. Yeah. You think my kind doesn't belong here? That I should watch myself and behave? But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Wow. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking hey, Kim, I got your back. Give him a punch on the shoulder. Well, we've all learned something here today. <laughs> Now that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. All right. What are you hauling? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. And the kind of cargo? Apples. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind Apples. of thing you'd say. If you had something to hide. Hmm. Apples. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? What was the argument all about? Uh, it's about biological determinism. Natural law. The sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like, come on, sheep. Mm. So you're just a racist, makes sense. I'm not just racist. Look, I've read. I'm the of, racist! Uh, the science oh. of racial theory has all been proved, even if uh, some people don't want to accept it. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Do I have a gun? What else have you thought up? Or, oh, yeah, I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. <laughs> Alright, I've already made up my mind. Wanna hear it? Jump ahead now. Let's go with this. You're a prime example of superior design, alright. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superiority cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. And this concerns you, policemen, so you better be vigilant. The damn kits are showing up good lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other intruder species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. We're not playing Civilization VI here. Cultural victory? What is this then? Hmm. Cultural victory? It's what the Kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any motetos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. 
Uh -huh. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go fuck yourself, Adolf? Don't push your luck, Runt. Mm hmm. Yeah, cool, nice theories, but all wrong, so. Yeah, go. Eat a bag of dicks. What is this place? Oh, these peoples. It says Greh or G R I H. I know we've got a dead body to deal with, but I'm looking Bastards! everywhere. <laughs> we have a right to work. Okay. So what's going on here? Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. Okay. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. You just right said that. To work. Right to work. Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Hmm. What kind of cows we're talking about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Hmm. Yeah, there's not a lot of conviction here. I don't think we chose a side here, dude. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher-ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the... Right to work! Right to work! Uh, okay, well, we have questions. Maybe you should ask them the questions, like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. Uh -huh. Yeah, so who are these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No. They follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were given a job to do! Okay, you can stop ending your phrases like in a shout. That would be good. So, what's the goal? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you're unable to breach the entrance? Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open. Could try to get in through the secretary's office. Door's locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer. Or... Whatever he is. Head measurer? Does he make hats or something? Is he a milliner? Huge Seminese guy standing up there on the overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. The access panel is right behind him. How bad could one guy be? You seem capable. Bad. 
Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there. But that one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers, not fighters. Hmm. Why don't you talk to them? Like civilized folk, you mean? These native fucks don't understand civilized. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. Hmm. Alright, well, I'll be leaving for now. We don't really want to get into the harbor, so... Lorries probably store fuel, now they store booze. Okay. What is this place? Still none the wiser. It's a frite. Sick. What is that? Oh, this is our police car, right? For you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. All right. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. All right, then. Pull out the radio. The frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. Prime Line sounds like a really cool... Like band name for a synthwave band. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Come in, dispatch. Come in, dispatch. No. Uh... Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker. Copy. No. Yeah. <laughs> this is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Um, let's, let's do the badge first. Connect me to the 41st. Do you have something to report? Just a second, Officer. All right. 10 2, 10 5. This is 41st. Come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. Ten four station forty one urgent business. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Over. Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. Dire need of financial assistance. I'm broke. Obo cop is broke. All right, Miss Handout. I've got a personal detail to discuss. So ten ten transmission complete. No. I need to report my badge missing. 10 9, over. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10 22 the captain. Over. Oh god, not the captain, no. Is it him? What does he want? <laughs> is it him? Oh god. Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Dick Mullen. Oh no, is that our name? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Ugh. Fuck off, Chester. Nobody likes you, I think. Dick Mullen is not your name. 
It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Yes. How dare they laugh at me? Don't they know I'm a superstar hobo cop? Tell them to stop. This is serious. Um. Haha, uh -huh. officer lost his badge. Haha, uh -huh. like I'm the first cop that misplaced his badge. Can we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with. No, ha ha ha, yeah. He Go. says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Well, satellite officer whatever can keep the nose out of my business. Undict us. Uh, get out of here. Let's move on with it. Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. I'm in pursuit of my. No, I need a new badge. Fuck me, Mac. Come here. You've got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. Chester, I'm gonna smack you when I find you. What's going on? Nothing, Mac. Ignore him. Super cop here lost his badge. That's hobo cop. Thank you. Superstar hobo cop. He lost his what now? Mac, just no. Badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Uh, could y'all just stop saying he lost his badge for a moment? You're like a broken record. Yes, you two, please stop saying he lost his badge. Why did he find it? Oh my god. Sergeant Parson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. Uh, I challenged failure? Oh no. 